I'm Darshan and I will be a moderator for today's webinar. On behalf of Vero, I'd like to welcome you all for another session from Vero Insights. With construction projects and con project environments getting increasingly complex, construction project owners are looking at innovative ways of procuring construction management. Today, we will have our speaker discuss and help us understand how project owners can leverage various construction procurement uh, approaches available with a number of case examples and such stories. Before we move ahead with the action presentation, I have some general set of instructions for all attendees. Please note that all attendees will be placed on mute. During the course of the presentation, if you'd like to post any questions, you'll find a box on the right hand side indicated in red. Request or type in your question and then hit the send button. And as and when I see, uh, as and when the presentation progresses, I will note down the high frequency questions, and I will post it to the presenter at the end of the presentation. If you're experiencing any connection issues, please close the window and then go back to your email and try connecting using the same link. If there are any further problems, I would request you to please email Puneet with the email ID that's been mentioned on your screen right now. Moving on, let me quickly introduce the speaker for today's presentation. Rita Williams is the lead analyst for the engineering construction domain here at Bero, and she specializes across the construction market in Europe. In her last three years at Bero, Rita has built extensive knowledge and expertise with construction engineering services, construction management, and other areas of capital building support. She has worked with a number of clients from diverse industries, from pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals, mining, FECG, and the FSI. And she has written and published a several thought partnership articles and papers in leading industry journals. Some of the topics that she has covered within her recent papers include sourcing engineering service requirements for global centers and effective contract management for construction projects in Russia. Without any further ado, now I will hand over the presentation to Rita, our presenter for the day. Thank you, Darshan, and good day, everyone. Before we get into the detailed discussion on today's topic for the webinar, I would like to spend a couple of minutes to set the context. Construction management is generally a subset of project management which in turn forms the management wing of the construction industry. Now on a global scale, the construction industry is expected to grow from USD 7.5 trillion in 2014 to almost 12 trillion by 2017. It is estimated that almost 55% of the construction demand will be from emerging regions. Now, by the late 2010 and early 2011, a number of organizations were essentially running projects with smaller teams, having downsized considerably during the recession years. But now that the market has rebounded for most project owners, many of them feel that they lack the resources to manage large-scale construction projects. Many of the large-scale construction projects are contractually widespread, and few project owners are successful in managing projects with such levels of technical complexity. Therefore, there is been a marked increase in contracting of construction management services in recent years. Another driver for today's topic is that although majority of construction project owners are aware of how construction managers, management is sourced within their respective organizations, most of them do not have much clarity as to how peer groups within the industry are procuring the same services. And therefore, the objective of this webinar, hopefully, is to provide an overview of construction management practices by peer groups and also to provide an update on where the market is heading and also to give validation on existing current practices within the industry. So for the sake of structure, the webinar has been divided into three subdivisions. First, we'll be looking at how construction management services are currently procured. From now on, within the webinar, I would be referring to construction management mostly as CM. The next would be to see how construction management or CM is sourced by region or how it differs by region. And lastly, to see where the market is heading 
and on what factors should organizations or project owners base their construction management contracting given the current environment. To begin with, at the start point, what drives the decision to contract CM services externally? Well, the decision to contract or outsource CM is dependent on multiple factors. The most dominant among them would be in-house expertise and the level of project spent, or if the design requirements are complex requiring multiple specialist firms to execute the construction project, the geography of the construction, and if the in-house team has experience in working in those regions and working in that contracting climate. And of course, the time frame within which these projects have to come into operation, how narrow is the time frame, how broad is the time frame. All of these factors play into why construction management is outsourced to project management firms or to larger engineering houses. And it also depends on the type of construction projects, whether you are building office spaces or industrial facilities or R&D structures. So these are the broad factors based on which construction management outsourcing is based on. Now, in order to arrive at what are the most popular delivery methods adopted across peer industries, we've analyzed projects in the past three years from the most dominant end users for the construction industry, and namely projects from the FMC sector or the consumer product sector, the pharmaceutical sector, food and beverage, mining, and chemicals. On studying the construction project from these sectors, four prominent methods of CM delivery were identified, namely CM as managed by contractor or contractor CM, or CM under a project management arrangement or project management firm, CM as a part of an EPCM contract or engineering system construction management contract, and CM as an exclusive contract with a pure CM service provider. Now, CM may be procured at risk or it could be procured at agency. At risk, it generally means that during the design phase, the owner and the project manager negotiate a contract and essentially what happens is the construction manager becomes the general contractor. That is CM at risk. When you have CM at agency, it is a purely management role where no construction is actually undertaken by the management firm, but merely the supervision of a construction management, supervision of contracts, and the parties involved in the actual construction is undertaken. This is what CM and agency means. Now, under these three execution models, under these four execution models, the next obvious question would be, under what circumstances are these delivery methods adopted by the major end user industries? So if we were to look at construction management at design, or contractor-based CM, this is largely the case when construction management is combined with other services such as engineering, architecture, and design. And it's most adopted when the project spend is generally within 50 to 250 million USD. Well, this is an industry benchmark, and it, this may not be the case for every individual project, but generally within the industry when the project spend is within these ranges, project owners have tended to adopt a contractor-based CM. And also, when the design is complex, requiring the design function to be separate, also when the contractor maturity or capability is high in both the disciplines, that is both in engineering as well as in construction management. Another factor could be prior working experience with the contractor. So, uh, since the general contractor does not develop the design but only executes it, the designing firm is made responsible for the construction. This is most adopted when there is only one firm handling the entire design and engineering function. And also, this is most predominantly adopted in developed markets of Northern America as well as parts of Europe. And the time scale for this is generally projects in this sort of contracting style are, are completed within one to two years. Next, construction management as a part of project management services. When design and engineering is required to be contracted by multiple parties, that is, you have a separate architect, a structural and civil work team, a mechanical, electrical, and piping team, when there are multiple contracting parties to a project, this tends to be the most dominant used delivery method. Also, if the client has low in-house expertise or does not have any prior experience working in that particular region, does not have any knowledge of the contracting laws in that particular region or the nature of contractors in that region, then 
project owners are more comfortable if construction management is managed under project management services. It could also be if the project management risk is higher, if uh, the possibility of schedule overruns or the possibility of risk is higher, then construction management is also gen managed by the project management firm as such. Next would be construction management as an exclusive service. When you say construction management as an exclusive service, this is generally the case when the project spend is very large or it is at least above 100 million for a single project. It could be below 100 million too, but in general cases, if it's going to be an exclusive construction management alone contract, the project spend would typically have to be higher. Combined for all, it could be multiple similar projects under execution within the same region whose combined project spend is higher um, than a normal single project and also when the project has to be executed within a short time frame within a matter of two years. One such instance could be uh, Pfizer being contracted uh, which had contracted Flor under an exclusive CM contract for the development of its, of its global research facility. The project spend for this particular project was close to 270 million and Flor was selected on the basis of past project execution for Pfizer in the particular region. So this is a case in which construction management was exclusively contracted as an exclusive service for a single project. Now construction management under ETCM, this is most popular in industries such as mining and in certain cases of high spend, which is oil and gas, chemicals, and in certain pharmaceutical projects also, when the nature of design specifications as well as engineering is very complex, and also that you have multiple specialist contractors who are needed to manage or execute the construction of this project, or when the project spend is really high, also when you have multiple smaller projects that have to be completed within a short frame of time, and all of these small projects put together make the entire big project. So when all these smaller projects have to be executed simultaneously, in such a case too, construction management is generally procured in tandem with engineering and procurement services. One of the most um, predominant end users for ETCM or contracting CM services under the ETCM arrangement would be mining science. A recent example would be the Anglo-American mining company which manages most of its projects in Australia under an EPCM agreement with Hatch. So these are the most widely adopted CM delivery methods by end user industries and these variations in certain contracting methods will differ on a project to project basis. Now that we've seen what at a high level what are the most adopted delivery methods, the next would be to see how contracting preferences emerge by geography. If you were to take, now that we have analyzed project execution for recent years, for the last three years, a definite preference in terms of contracting nature appears. In developed markets or in developed regions of the world, which is predominantly North America, Europe, and in part of Australia, there has been a tendency to adopt or bundle construction management with a contractor or bundle construction management with other services such as engineering and design. One of the reasons why this is popular in developed regions could be that the contractor capability in these regions is significantly higher and that project owners also have uh, prior working relations with contractors that are based out of these regions and hence are more comfortable with them managing both the design as well as the construction management. Another factor could be that they have standardized engineering and design standards. Like for example, in most parts of Northern America, LEED or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, which is a green standard, is almost is almost standardly followed for most of the building structures or at least bigger projects in the region. And most contractors in the region are familiar with these standards. And for example, in Europe, you have the Euro code, which are a set of structural design standards developed by CEN, which is the European Committee for Standardization. And this covers design of all types of structures in steel, concrete, timber, and aluminum. And this is followed in most countries across Europe. And most of the contractors as well as project owners are familiar with these designs and these engineering uh, specifications. And hence, it is easier to bundle design with construction management with the contractor. Also another factor would be that 
the HSE policy or health, safety, and environment policy in all of these regions are pretty much standardized, and therefore they most project do not, owners do not feel the necessity to bring in an exclusive contract uh, construction manager or project management firm to oversee uh, the policies of the general contractor. Another factor would be the risk. These cases have de uh, the scope of construction management is less complex than that of developing regions and also the prospect for supply disruptions or political instability is relatively lower in these regions and therefore it is more easier for clients to bundle design as well as CM. If we were to look at the developing regions of the world, most companies maintain an overall arrangement with an international project management consulting for CM in the consulting and supervision role from start to completion while the design and build team will generally constitute of international engineering consultants as well as local contractors. One of the reasons why most clients insist on project management firms managing construction management in these regions is one could be complex contracting laws, complex because clients may not be familiar with the contracting laws, also because they differ widely from country to country and there is not much standardization of contracting laws across regions, immature supply chains which could cause to material uh, disruptions and procurement, procurement hazards for certain uh, large scale equipment which is required for construction and also that there is a general lack of awareness of um, safety standards and unsafe work environment and there is also the diverse engineering standards. You do not have any agencies such as the Europe a code for multiple that, that is followed across multiple countries. Each country generally tends to have its own standards of engineering and building code and it is generally more safer for clients to work alongside a project management consultant firm who has previously worked in these regions and is aware of, of these. And also a consultant is required to navigate the construction permits in this region because a lot of clients run into problems with regard to regulatory clearances environmental issues and problems related to land acquisition. Another cited reason in developing regions is a marked lack of skill or uh, skilled workforce for project managers, site managers who generally have to be on site for construction. And also there is a lack of awareness of modern equipment and technology in developing regions. And therefore most of the clients are comfortable if the construction management is managed by a project management firm. If you take the last case, which is globally, irrespective of the region in which it is being adopted, once the project spend exceeds a certain limit or the project complexity exceeds a certain limit, irrespective of the industry or the geographic location, project owners tend to opt in for or tend to lean towards adopting an EPCM approach because they do not have the in-house expertise to manage these projects and these projects are need to be executed on fast track or they are just too complex to be managed with the resources of only a single organization. So in that case, generally an, a pure management approach, if the approach is going to be a pure management approach, then the contracting nature would generally lean towards an EPCM agreement. Now that we've seen how contracting of services differs by, differs by region, Let's take a look at some of the case examples of companies who have adopted bundling of CM with contractors. So the first look we'll have as, as uh, Nestle US for their industrial plants and bottling plants facilities in the US. They have were contracted by Gary Engineering and this agreement generally was for architecture, civil, electrical, mechanical, as well as structural engineering and construction management. They executed over 11 projects across the United States with Gary Engineering. Nestle Europe for their industrial and manufacturing facilities in multiple regions across Eastern Europe, they had worked with CM Group and Empress W Process Industries again in a design and CM approach for their recent projects in the region. Another example from the food and beverage industry would be Kraft for their coffee production facility in multiple countries in Europe for UK, Switzerland and Germany were again contracted under the design and CM approach. Coca-Cola for their manufacturing and distribution centers in UK. Most of these projects were nationwide. Uh, this project was a nationwide project execution, as well as 
Uh, this was an expansion and upgradation project that was nationwide. It was again contracted in a design and CM approach. If you were to look at some of the pharmaceutical companies, their recent projects such as um, GSK's vaccine manufacturing facility in Belgium was contracted under an EPCM approach. LLLE it again worked with its preferred set of contractors in uh, these particular regions of North America and Europe. It was an EPCM agreement. Multiple EPCM agreements were followed within these industries. So if you were to look at the geography of all these companies and the geographies in which they were executed, you would see that the most preferred approach for these companies or in these geographic locations was design and construction management, design along with construction management or construction management in, in an EPCM approach. So this is in validation for declaring that bundling of CM with contractors is more prevalent in the developed markets of the world. If we were to flip back and look at the regions in which project management consultancy or construction management under a project management firm is used. If you look at these locations, Singapore, Indonesia, Ukraine, South Africa, Russia, all of these are cases in which are in developed parts of the world and in which firms have been engaged in a project management consulting role. In almost 80% of the cases, a PM is employed to ensure that construction management is up to international standards and because building codes differ significantly by region and the use of certain materials in construction or grade of cement is regulated. There's also a risk of delays in these regions due to political instability. For example, Hill International in one of the statements, statements Hill International is a leading uh, pure CM services provider, has said that a majority of its clients invariably use its services as a pure construction management approach in regions such as Egypt, Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq. So this is in further validation that construction managers or construction management is contracted or managed under a project management consultant in developing regions of the world. Like for example, if you take Coca-Cola, the same company had executed a design and CM approach in UK, which is a developed market, but in developing regions of the world, it prefers to have a project management consultant to proceed the construction management. Now that we've seen how construction management differs by region and how companies differ in their approach towards construction management by region, the next obvious question would be to ask if a single CM can be employed for multiple geographies because no company is going to have or no project owner is going to have projects only in one particular region or in one particular country, but in multiple countries. For example, in this financial year, project CNG has multiple projects, both greenfield as well as expansion projects that it has to execute in 23 countries. So for most large companies, they will have projects in multiple regions. So before we look into if it is possible to have a single CM for multiple geographies, let's take a look at why would a single CM make more sense or be beneficial for the project owner. One would be to avoid multiple tenders. Tenders can increase the project cost by close to 5 to 10 percentage. And also, next would be it brings in a single point of reference or accountability. In the case of where Pfizer works with Floor, Floor had screened almost 3,000 contractors for, for the selected scope of work across two years. And this was better managed because they had a single point of accountability and reference. And also that it's easier to implement project construction on a fast track basis on a shorter time. Again, to draw from the Anglo-American and Hatch Agreement, their projects of value in terms of value was almost 1.6 billion USD and multiple smaller projects had to come into operation within a time frame of two years. So for fast track project execution, it's better to have a single point of contact for the, ma the construction management of your project. And also because it provides better visibility for your capital project across portfolios and across multiple geographies. And all of this will ultimately lead to saving time as well as saving money and as well as increased project quality. Now that we've seen 
why a single CM for multiple geographies would be beneficial. The next would be to see have there been any companies that have implemented such an approach and implemented successfully. The first case would be Unilever, which is a global FMCG company, one of the leading companies. Unilever has multiple CAPEX projects in the APAC region for their shampoo, soap and detergent. And uh, the priority for Unilever was fast track project execution, design compliance, and to insulate the company against supply chain risk and also to be a better worse and more familiar with the construction laws and contracting practices in that region. So the approach followed by Unilever was that it entered into a partnership arrangement with Royal Hashkin, which is again a project management and design firm based in with a strong presence in APAC. So from this, the services scope that was entered into by Unilever and Royal Hashkin was consultancy design services, project management, and construction management. And also they had better working relations. And also because Unilever has executed projects with Royal Hashkin in Thailand and because of their prior experience with working with the client, it was easier because they had better knowledge of their working styles. They were familiar with the design and standard specifications that were adopted by Unilever. And uh, Unilever also had some unique points that it wanted their contractors to be screened for, like contractors should be certified under OSHA or should have an ISO 9001 quality certification. So all of these things were automatically screened by Royal Hastening and therefore managing these projects and managing day-to-day -day construction became all the more easier. And this particular partnership was contracted across multiple countries, namely Vietnam, Thailand and Indonesia. If we were to look at another case of a single CM for multiple geographies, Nestle follows a slightly a slightly different approach along the same lines but a slightly different approach. Nestle had multiple CAPEX projects in not just developing regions of the world but across the world and their priority was again compliance with standards that the HSC for the contractors was in part and also for design and supervision. So the approach followed by Nestle was that they would bundle their contracts at a regional level. They will also bundle their contracts in the master services agreement across multiple geographies or for a couple of projects within the same region. For most projects in emerging regions such as Russia, Poland, Turkey, Egypt, the company contracts construction management with an international player with deep regional experience in a PM arrangement. Nestle prefers to contract project and construction management with established global firms with local on-ground presence. So if you take a look at their approach towards contracting or consolidating construction management with a single firm. At a country level, they recently executed projects in Mexico for their coffee food processing facilities. And this was a 12-month engagement with Jacobs Engineering for those projects alone. So all the projects in Mexico for these particular divisions were executed by Jacobs Engineering. If we move on and look at a regional level, for multiple projects under design and CM approach in Eastern Europe, they have repeatedly used PM Group as well as MSW Group. So this is a preferred contractor's network. If you would look at a multiple engagement across multiple geographies, they recently had an engagement with Teberin International in an engineering PM and CM approach, which is a bundled construction management and engineering approach across cutting across multiple geographies. So Teberin was the company that managed their engineering as well as their construction management in these regions. So as you can see, Nestle has three levels of how it manages its projects, but always you can see there is a consolidation with at least one player or a consolidation with a preferred network of, of uh, companies within these regions. Now that we've seen construction management services are, are leveraged by region, Next que obvious question would be to ask if, you know, our construction management services are very frequent. Will it make more sense to go in for a partnership approach or an alliance approach? So one such case could be BHP Built-in, which is a mining giant, and to see how they approach their construction management needs. By 2015, BHP had to implement almost $2 billion worth of projects 12 projects, each, each project worth 
over USD 2 billion in Australia alone. So the, the company took a decision to form all specific strategic alliances for its iron ore divisions. It formed an EPC alliance with uh, FAST in SKM and Australia, which is a joint venture between Floor and SKM for its iron ore projects and for Bechtel for its metallurgical and coal projects and SNC Labs and for Potash. So for whatever categories that they did not have enough in-house in expertise to manage those projects, they went in and formed an alliance for an EPC, EPCM sort of contract agreement where they procured engineering procurement and construction management together. So this is one such approach. And when can this, this sort of approach be more beneficial is when engineering and construction support is highly complex and critical for the project, when the projects have very high value, when you need the projects to be executed on a simultaneous basis, and also that the projects that you need to manage have low in-house expertise in terms of management. So this is one such case in which an alliance was formed for construction management. Next, it would also make sense to see whether only a pure construction management approach or only construction management was, was procured separately. One such case could be in Merck. They had an exclusive construction management agreement with the Hill International. Hill had managed their multi-billion dollar campaign in the United States by partnering as a construction management service provider. And Hill International has already worked with Merck on multiple projects, so they were already familiar with the working style, and that was one of the biggest advantages and leverages that Merck had obtained from engaging in a pure construction management contract with Hill International. This again would make this sort of approach towards construction management would make more sense when you have again very high spend and also when the design function is already separated uh, from construction management or you have an exclusive architect and engineering uh, team that is working on the design function and a general contractor that has already been contacted. Then it would make more sense to have construction management also as a separate contract to manage these multiple parties. And also that the scope of the construction management has to be extensive and complex and only then would it make more sense to go into an exclusive construction management approach. Also the time frame for these projects matters when you have quick turnaround when most of these projects have to be operational within a year or maximum within two years, this would make more sense. Now that we've seen that construction management differs by geography and there is a marked difference in how construction management is approached in developed regions versus developing regions. And then we saw about are there any companies that utilize this and have um, a single contracting firm across multiple geographies or if any alliances have been formed or any exclusive contracts for construction management are followed within the industry. The next obvious step would be to analyze your own internal team and see how you should base your construction management approach. The decision to base construction management design can be approached as firstly we should evaluate your in-house team and see whether you have multiple projects that have complex engineering and design in multiple locations. And based on these four, based on these three factors, it would generally make more sense to decide your delivery type. If you have multiple projects that are complex in multiple locations, what would be the most apt delivery method for that particular instance? and also to evaluate your contractor pool. A lot of companies lose out on the contractors that they they already have worked on with or they already have prior established relationships with. To again go back and reevaluate the working relationship with those contractors to see what are the common geographies in which these contractors are present and if you have projects in those particular regions and you have been contract you have contacted that company in either uh, engineering and CM approach or an exclusive CM approach or CM and the PMC approach. If any of these past project executions have taken place or with these contractors, it would make more sense to reevaluate your contractor pool and see whether these contractors can be used for construction for managing your projects across multiple geographies. And also if you have similar nature projects, if you have a lot of office space projects or if you have a lot of industrial projects, it would make more sense to pool in your projects by the nature of projects and then look at your contractor pool to see who you have executed your project in the past with and see if there are any leverages 
that you can take for a type of engagement with the contractor. Another area would be to identify new areas by asset type, by contractor, and by geography. By asset type, there have been a few innovative companies such as PNG who have combined construction management with other traditionally separately procured services such as um, ISM. PNG recently renewed its contract with JLL uh, from 2011 and till 2015, in which it contracted integrated facilities management, property development, along with construction management. So, and this was all of this was done for their office spaces or across their office spaces division, and it makes more sense for them to to club property development along with construction management and ISM for their office spaces. So, a company could also look at what sort of bundling would appeal to their particular asset type and uh, and leverage on that. And also by contractor, what sort of contractors that they worked with in the past and what sort of geographies they have worked with in the past and identify if the contractors they have worked with in the past are entering into new geographies in which your team has projects in and so uh, probably a relationship in that end could be leveraged and you can identify new synergies for developing your project. Now that we've seen how we should base your construction management contracting, the last would be to see what are the possible trends that are upcoming in the market. Most project owners and as well as construction companies and project management firms say that there will be a decline in contractor management CM or contractor CM is expected. This is largely because owners now recognize or now feel that they're not fully prepared to define their requirements at the start of the project and they would like more flexibility in terms of fixing on the design. And they're not yet ready to turn over control to the design builder at the early stages. So CM firms are increasingly being asked to guide owners to the most appropriate delivery system. And also because a lot of in-house expertise led to increased outsourcing and clients are also looking to build in their in-house expertise because of which they would not want um, the level of dependence on contract and managed CM is expected to decrease. And also clients feel that you know the contractors may be calling all the shots because they both design and develop and construct their own work and there is no external supervision as such for contract and managed CM. Another trend is one that we have seen throughout uh, the throughout the webinar is that companies are likely to consolidate their geographic scope of construction because in recent years companies have slowly extended the geographic scope of CM services. As you can see uh, throughout the webinar we have, seen, we have seen cases in which companies have consolidated by region, they have consolidated by contractor and this trend is, is, expected to, is expected to take shape. The next would be to build an in-house expertise. As mentioned a lot of clients lost their in-house expertise and in-house teams, the majority of them during the session years. And now that the market is rebounding, clients are expected to build in their in-house teams and make sure that a lot of dependence on outsourcing of uh, construction management is not, is not followed or at least they have the expertise to supersede the work of both project management consultants as well as construction firms for their construction projects. And increasingly, Another trend is that clients have said that CM firms are being increasingly used to obtain not just construction management oriented information but also analysis of the broader environment on economic drivers and what is driving the current construction market in places that they are going to construct and invest in. So this is one particular uh, trend that has been observed by construction management firms as being asked by clients. So that summarizes the webinar and brings us to the end of the session. And we will be open for questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that wraps up our presentation for this evening. Now we will essentially take up some of the high frequency questions. And uh, the first question that we have today is that, uh, how do uh, project owners manage project control service requirements? Is it a part of construction or project uh, or project management portfolio? Or is, it, or is it done separately? Rita, over to you. 
Okay, just to repeat the question. How do project owners manage project control services requirement? It is, is it a part of the construction project management portfolio? Well, traditionally in most projects, project owners uh, procure project control uh, services as a part of their construction management or project management. However, uh, there is an increasing trend among project owners to have different project control and project management because project owners feel that in certain projects having project control and project management together with a single uh, company might lead to clashes of interest. So it could be beneficial to have a project control partner who could uh, support your project for which a different company provides construction or project management. However, this becomes critical only for um, high value and critical projects. For small scale expansions and alterations, project owners uh, could look into merging controls uh, and project management together. So this would make more sense in that case. I hope that answers your question. So our next question uh, would be, uh, so whenever we have partnerships uh, for construction management, uh, especially the long-term partnerships, or uh, uh, do we only uh, do it like you know when we have the pipe, whenever we have a very strong pipeline and like, you know, the pipeline is very heavy, well within a time frame. So what would be your opinion on this? So I guess the question is: Are a partnership formed only for um, long-term purposes, or can they be formed even when you? when you have a um, heavy project pipeline within a short time frame? Well, uh, it differs from organization to organization in most cases. Like uh, as I had um, highlighted in the webinar, Nestle had a project management execution of only 12 months with Jacobs Engineering, which was again a partnership agreement and that lasted for 12, uh, for 12 months. Whereas uh, Anglo American and Hatch, that is an agreement that uh, is for uh, three years from 2011 to 2014. So it entirely depends on your project requirements, whether your project requirements are uh, within a shorter time frame or within an extended time frame. And it entirely depends on the agreement between you and the contractor on whether you're willing to terminate uh, the partnership arrangement once your project execution or your project execution is complete and you do not have any more projects in that particular region. That is entirely uh, left up to the contractor as well as the project owner. Well, in most cases, if a partnership agreement is being formed, it would generally mean that they have a heavy project pipeline at least for the next two years in the particular region. So that would be one thing that would define a partnership agreement. Thank you, Rita. Uh, so uh, with that being our last question, uh, we will be closing out today's webinar with this. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And in case if you have any other questions, uh, please uh, you could forward it to the uh, organizer of this webinar, Puneet Ramal at abero-inc.com. And uh, thank you folks. Thank you for joining us today and have a great day ahead. Thank you.